God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. What I, what I like us to look at in the word of God today is come out of the wilderness. Kill it to God. Come out of the wilderness and say to yourself, I'm coming out of my wilderness. I am coming out of my wilderness. I refuse to remain in the wilderness by the power of the Almighty God. I am coming out in Jesus' name. Now, what are we talking about when we talk about the wilderness? And now, when you read the word of God, you'll find that what I'm trying to say to us in, in the book of uh, Psalm 107. Psalm 107. Glory to God. Psalm 107. And look at what the Bible says here. In verse 4. It said, And they wandered in their wilderness in a solitary place. And now, what is wilderness? Let, let's back up a little bit. What is wilderness? And wilderness, in our mind, sometimes we're just thinking about being in the forest, being, being in a place that, you know, you don't know, being in the jungle, being in the Amazon forest. Uh, that, that's what comes to our mind. But it is more than that. By application, it is any place that you find yourself that God has not a portion for you. Any place that you find yourself that is not the will of God for your life. And so when you go back and look at the children of Israel, because we know that story all too well that they wandered in the wilderness, and this is what the Bible is saying here, you find out that God wanted them to take a very short journey. Very short. It was not supposed to be 40 years but because they were in their own will not the will of God they had to be there for 40 years it was not supposed to be 40 years so there's a reason why you find yourself in a place that God doesn't want you to be but the good thing is this God said that I will be with you whether you are in the water or you are in the fire or you are in the wilderness if you truly are loved by God which you are and especially if you're a believer in Christ God is with you God wants to get you out of there he does not want you to be there you want to be there but God wants to get you out of there glory to God and that's why we want to partner with God to say God I want to get out don't want to be in debt Lord I want to get out of debt Lord, what, what can you do Lord to help me to get out of debt Lord I'm, I want to get out of this mental torture I just feel pressure in my mind day and night and I'm not able to concentrate and pray and read the word of God. Lord, I want to get out of it. And the Lord wants you to get out of it. And so he's waiting for you to partner with him to get you out of it. And that's why we say, Lord, we want to get out of our wilderness. All we need now, Lord, is give us a little help out of heaven to make it outside of the world. I don't want to be there for 40 years. I don't want to be there even for four hours. I want to get out now. Glory to God. I want to get out of my wilderness right now. And now from the scripture that we read, number one thing that we see there is that it is solitary to be in the wilderness. It is what? Solitary. 
you, you become lonely and by yourself. Now think about Hagar. Hagar was, a, was the maid of Sarah. And when she wasn't acting right and Sarah tried to discipline her, what happened is that she took off. She went by herself into the wilderness and the Lord met her there. That's what I'm saying. If God loves you, if you try to run away from God, God will find you wherever you are. The eye of the Lord runs through and from the whole earth. And the Lord met her and told her, what are you doing here in the wilderness? He said, I'm running from my mistress. And the Lord said, go back home. You're not supposed to be here. You're in the wrong place. Sound like God asked her, do you want to get out of the wilderness? And she said, yes, I want to get out now. God said, go home. I'll leave you out. That's what God does. It is solitary for you to be there. And solitary would mean that your emotions have now overcome you. And you're shutting down your own life by yourself. You're no longer responsive to spiritual things. You're no longer connecting with God. It looks like the sickness with God is fading in and fading out. You're trying your best to be that Christian that God wants you to be, but you're just not getting there. You still come to church, don't get me wrong. You can be solitary in your mind and you can still be here in service. <clears throat> Glory to God. Your body, your spiritual body will be shutting down. You will still be here lifting up your physical hand and shouting hallelujah and nobody will know that you are in your own wilderness at that time. And some of us are. And, and, and sometimes on the inside you're bleeding. You're struggling on the inside like... Like Jacob and Esau, when the mother had them in the womb, they're fighting. They said, Jacob and Esau fighting in your womb. And nobody else knows it but you. You feel it. And it brings you to a place of solitary. It may be financial. It may be academics. It may be professional. And you're dealing with these things. You're just locked in in the wilderness of life. But God wants to get us out of there. Hallelujah. That's the desire of God. That's the promise of God. God, it was not meant for the children of Israel to stay and die in the wilderness. They were supposed to pass through and come to the promised land. And for some of us, God wants you to pass through and come to your land of promise. But you have taken refuge in the wilderness. You're sitting right there when you're supposed to be walking along with God. And the more that you delay, the more time you spend in there. But God wants us to partner with him. God wants to partner with us. God wants to hold our hand and walk us through. That's why he said again, if you're in the fire, I'll be there with you. I'll be there with you not to keep you in there, but to get you out of there. That's what he did to set the mission of Bethlehem, right? He came in the fire to get them out of the fire. Not to build tabernacle in the fire, but to get them out of the fire. When Jonah tried to run from God and he, he got swallowed by the whale, what happened? The whale brought him out of the water. The whale didn't swim back into the deep ocean. The whale came back to land because the will of God was to bring him out of the water into land. And so God wants to bring you out of that situation into a better place. He wants to bring you out of that mess into a miracle. Glory to God. That's what he wants to do. But sometimes we're not working with God as fast enough. And so God is walking ahead of us. We're standing behind. And the more time we spend behind, the more solitary it becomes. Christianity is supposed to be an exciting way of life, not a solitary way of life. You cannot afford to cut yourself out of fellowship. You make yourself vulnerable to the devil. I know you all watch Animal Channel and how the, the, the lions hunt. They try to isolate one out of the pack. I've seen buffaloes attack and kill lions. How? Before, because they're bound together. But buffaloes are always prey to the lion when they are isolated. Doesn't matter how massive, how big this buffalo is, it 
flock of lions can take it down. But when they stay together and build a wall around themselves, no lion penetrate the wall of buffaloes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's why it is dangerous to isolate yourself in your wilderness. So wilderness can be very solitary. When you find yourself now in a solitary place, you may be thinking you're in your wilderness. It's a place of wondering. He said they found no city. I'm reading Psalm 107 and verse 4. He said they found no city to dwell in. They're wandering from place to place. It's not a will of God for us to wander from place to place. And sometimes we find ourselves like we're lost in the maze of this world. You're trying to find your bearing. All you need to do is to let go and let God, because God orders the steps of the righteous. That's what he said, the steps of the righteous. They're ordered by God. So I want to let God order my step. Then wandering in my wilderness. He said they had no city to dwell in. So it's a sign of being in the wilderness when I find myself wondering. Can't hit the mark. I'm trying one thing after the other. I'm in business making investment here, making investment there, not knowing what is the right thing. I'm trying everything out, not knowing what is right. But if I can just pray to God and say, God, lead me. And I hear from God, God say, this is what I want you to do. It's even easier. Then I'm now wondering and trying everything, hoping that I will get something out of it all. So in the wilderness, we find ourselves wondering. We're wondering in life. We're searching for things like it is lost. And sometimes we're looking for God like God is absent in lost. All we need is to key into the Holy Spirit and let the Spirit of God help you. And that's where you begin to discern the will of God for your life. Where God wants you to be in. Glory to God. And God starts to speak to you. And some of us, it looks like so far fetched. Can God speak to somebody? Yes, He can. God can lead somebody. I remember I told us a testimony of somebody who was looking for a job. And so he went for an interview and, and they selected some of them and said the rest of them, go, we'll get back to you. Never go back to this man. But on this day, as he was laying down on his couch and the Lord said to him, dress up tomorrow, go to that place of work that you were interviewed in. Lord, why should I? And they didn't call me. Lord said, get dressed, go. And he said, what do I have to lose? And God has said, dress and went to that place and everybody was seated those who were called for the second interview were seated and he didn't know he didn't get a message but the Lord said go and he joined them and sat down and not quite a few minutes the boss came in and said everybody come with me and he got everybody into another room registered them all took their information and said you are hired he was not called but the Lord told him join them and he joined them. That's somebody who is led by God. And God still does these things. Most time we're too much in a hurry to even listen to him. God is trying to get your attention. You are on the fast lane. You're just zooming past God. And it looks like God looked through the window and said, there he goes again. There she goes again. I'm trying to get his attention. But he is wandering in his wilderness. And that's why we said today, we want to get out of the wilderness. Don't want to be there no more. Don't want to be in solitary. Don't want to be wandering all my life. I want to be in the will of God every moment of the day. And now verse 5, it said, hungry and thirsty, and their soul faint in them. It's a place of hunger. It's a place of thirst. It's a place of fainting soul. I just talk about Hagar. When Hagar was going in the wilderness and Abraham gave, him a, gave her a pitcher of water. And with Ishmael, they both went. And after some time, she got hungry, she got thirsty in the wilderness. She put the baby down and she said, Lord, I, I don't want to see the baby die before me, before my eyes. I don't want to see my eyes. I don't want to see my baby die. I want to go apart from my baby and we both die. And immediately the Lord showed up and said, Hagar, Hagar, what are you doing here? 
He said, the cry of the baby, not your cry, the cry of the baby has come to me. I've heard his cry. He said, this baby, you God, I'm going to bless him too. I'm going to bless him and bless his generation. He's going to be great. And so what am I saying here? When you find yourself spiritually thirsty, you're dry. You can't pray, can't read the word of God no more. Church is no longer exciting. You come in here, you're mad. You're mad at everybody, mad at God, mad at the praise worship people, mad at the preacher. You're sitting there, you're mad. Nothing interests you no more. You're in a place that you ought not to be. You're in your wilderness at that very moment in time. Glory to God. And, and, and he said, it's a place of thirst, a place of fainting soul. The soul is fainting. And he said, they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. It's a place of trouble. Don't want to be there. When you are bombarded on every side by trouble, you need to start to call on God. That's why he said, call on me in where? In the days of hell of your trouble. He said, I will hear you. I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things. You find yourself being bombarded and in a wild wind and there's so much, so much going on on end. That shows you it's time to start a call on God. Don't stay at home and try to deal with it yourself. Call on the name of the Lord. And in verse 9, for he satisfied, this is what the Bible said. He said he satisfied the longing soul. He fills the hungry soul with goodness, such as seat in darkness and the shadow of death, be bound, being bound in affliction and ire. Being bound. What a life. Who wants to be in a situation like this? Where he's bound in affliction and bound with iron. But the good news is that the law said he will. Glory to God. He said he will deliver the righteous out of it. Why? Because he has all powers. All powers in heaven and all belong to him. And in verse 33, look at what it said. In verse 33, the Bible says the Lord God Turn it, what? The river into wilderness and the water spring into dry ground. And in verse 35, he said he can do the opposite. He can turn the wilderness into what? Standing water. And dry ground into water spring. God has the power to make a life. God has the power to make dead. So he has the power and both a stream. And that's why we said tonight, we want to get out. We want to get out because our God can make the wilderness to become a standing water, an oasis. He can sure do that. He did it before. Children of Israel were going in their wilderness and they had nothing to eat. What did they do? He brought food out of heaven. They had no water to drink. He said to Moses, you strike the rock. Water is going to come out. Now think about it. How water come out of rock? It's got to be God who do that. Dry rock. That's in our water for millions of people with Moses to drink. And they drank and drank and drank. It never ran dry. The spring of living water. And that's what Jesus said. That he is the spring of living water. That when you drink of him, you will thirst no more. I just like the attitude of that woman by the side of the well when Jesus met her and told her everything about her life. And Jesus asked her to give me the drink. And she said, you know that I'm a Samaritan. We don't relate that much. And then Jesus said to her, if you know who is talking to you, you would have asked him to give you to drink. That when you drink, you will thirst no more. The woman said, well, forget about this feature. Forget about this well that I come all the time. Give me water to drink so that I thirst no more. That's what I want. Hallelujah. Don't want to struggle again. Any day of my life, I want this one that never runs dry. So what Bible is saying to me and you today is that the Lord God Almighty has the power to restore everything. It doesn't matter what it is. You're going through mental wilderness, he can bring it back together. You're going through spiritual wilderness, he can restore you again. You're going through financial wilderness, he can restore it again. There's nothing Jehovah cannot do. If he promised it and we believe it and stand in the land of promise, 
he's going to fulfill his word for us. As far as I'm concerned, for me and my house, we're coming out of the wilderness. We refuse to pitch our tent in the wilderness because that's not where we belong. We belong in the land of promise. And in the land of promise shall we go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come and give God glory here tonight. Give God praise right now. Somebody magnify the Lord with me. Let us praise his name together. Thank God for his word. Hallelujah. Thank God for his word. Somebody give him glory for the word of God today. We just give him praise because he has the power to make the wilderness to become an oasis. If he said he's going to do it, he will surely do it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise and glory. Somebody give him praise and glory. Somebody give him praise and glory. Let your praises go up right now. Let your praises go up right now. Take a moment. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord in the name of Jesus. Oh, I will bless him. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'll praise him in the morning. I'll praise him in the noon. I'll praise him. If you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request, we would like to hear about it. Please call us at 401-954-6188 or visit our website at www.kingstabernacle.org. You are also welcome to join us on Sundays for services beginning at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. and for Wednesday Bible studies at 7 p.m. We are located at 500 Greenville Avenue in Johnston, Rhode Island. Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations.